Hello everyone, welcome back. You're watching Empyrean Galactic Survival episode 199. I'm Enigmius and today we're working on the forward portion of the nacelles for the USS Discovery, which is no longer the USS Discovery, it's the USS Discovery with something else going on in the middle. <laughs> it's the saucer section and the nacelles. Uh, the reason why we're starting here is because I was thinking about all of the things that we have left to do and this forward portion is going to be by far the most um, complicated to try and get it to look uh, half decent and realistically I wasn't even creating an expectation at this point that we would get it looking like the the forward section of the uh, the, the actual nacelles on the actual USS Discovery just because very very complicated shape or I should say complex shape We've got a lot of curves and a lot of angles all converging in the same spots in a variety of different places all over this front uh, section. So it became more a case of, can I get it together and do so in a way that looks acceptable, even if it's not um, uh, even a close analog for the actual discovery. And the more I thought about it, the more I realized I had no clue. And the only way to find out would be to just get down to the business and see what we can do, get it done, do a little bit of experimenting and uh, a little bit of trial and error. And hopefully before too long, it would come together into something that we would recognize as a viable front end for the nacelles. And you can see um, trailing off towards the back of the ship, we've got all of that layout still done. It's still there. It's waiting for us. Once we get this front end done, things should go fairly quickly in terms of um, the, the amount of blocks that we can start to place um, in ways that resemble what we're trying to accomplish. So what you're looking at now is my first attempt at getting this to work. And I've got a few ideas and I, I get an idea and I try it and before long I realize it's not the best idea so I try something else. It's just the nature of the beast with these complex shapes that uh, even if I went in with the plan and I was confident that it would be exactly what I need in order to get this done, there's still never a guarantee. There's always uh, the possibility of coming across something that I overlooked, didn't think about, um, didn't anticipate. It's sort of a, a case where we've got, I mean, we, we did that section, that little narrow strip that kind of shows off that curve on the front end. And if anything, that's kind of something that I wanted to preserve because I really like that curve. It's, it's I find it very elegant. Um, and it we, we need things that look um, like they'd be otherwise impossible to do in a voxel world sometimes in order to um, maintain a, a feeling of being inspired to continue building things that you're not sure if you can build. It's, it's all part of the learning process, I guess you could say. And in this case, the weirdest thing happened is because I still wasn't really um, confident that I was headed in the right direction in order to get this thing done. And all of a sudden, everything just fell into place. And before I knew it, I was looking at something that was actually fairly decent and something that I would be uh, happy to stick with, which was... Uh, very unexpected and it's this part here this specific area that we're working on now was the beginning of that process where things just started to come together um, the shape worked the way it um, followed the contours that I was looking for and at the same time maintained that subtle sort of curve it didn't force us to abandon that subtle curve I guess you could say um, which is sometimes what happens when you when you commit to a certain pattern, certain design, uh, or a certain shape, is you realize very early on that it's not going to line up with some of the other shapes that you already have or some of the other shapes that you had in mind. But in this case, it actually came together really well. And it was something that we were able to kind of mess around with uh, a little bit, make some adjustments, and arrive at something that we, we can actually use. So it, I was kind of concerned that this was going to take uh, an awfully long time of fiddling just to get things um, to the point where I could say good enough. 
for the time being with the understanding that I would probably have to come back later and redo sections of it because I wouldn't be happy with it. But in this case, it's it's actually coming together uh, a little bit better than I had anticipated. And certainly, it was uh, something that just looking at it, I could say, yeah, that's probably something that I could keep if I didn't come up with a better idea between now and the time I had to commit to it. Because there's always that point, whether it's um, the build is basically done and we're looking at making a blueprint, or um, we've got so many other things built off of that section that in order to change it, we would have to make massive changes uh, elsewhere. Th there are those points where you're just committed and um, th they don't happen often, but they do happen. And it's always nice when you look at something and say, we could be committed right now and I would be happy with that. So you can see we've got a little bit of difficulty right in this particular section where I'm working now, trying to get everything to come together with... Um, Again, recognizing the whole situation with the voxel is not everything is going to come together on the seams and not everything is going to come together on the edges, but at least we, we can hope that it would be relatively close. And in this case, we, we managed to get that. We managed to get it relatively close. Um, and the, the biggest thing now is <laughs> I started doing this and I was uh, so enthusiastic for the way that it was going together and so surprised at how quickly it came together that I completely um, kind of forgot what I did. <laughs> that, that's one of the things that happens sometimes too, um, just because there's so many changes going on and they're, they're little changes. You place a few blocks and you remove them. You place a few different blocks in the same spot. And the next thing you know, uh, when it comes time to duplicate that design somewhere, you have no idea how to do it because you can't remember the steps that you took to get it to where it is. And it takes a little while just looking at things and sort of remembering what the shapes are and then duplicating them across to the other side, which is where we, we basically ended up with this. Because we obviously we have mirror mode on. You can see me going back and forth um, through the mirror plane. Usually when I go over to the other side, it's just to remove blocks um, that I need to have removed, otherwise the, the intended blocks won't fit. But we've still got uh, the other half of the nacelle that we, we have to do. We've been working on, from this perspective, we've been working on the right half of the front section, then we go over to the, the other side through the mirror plane. And then the whole idea, of course, is if we set it up on one half, then we've got the map that tells us how to set it up on the other half. That's pretty straightforward and something before I started using mirror mode um, that I got a lot of experience with uh, building things on the other the other side. So it, it's not necessarily problematic in the sense that, um, you know, it, it's a huge complicated design and we, we've got to line things up and do all that other stuff. But it is in the sense that, like I say, I, I got it to a certain point and suddenly I had no recollection of exactly what I did to get it there. And I had to spend a fair bit of time just going back and forth in order to figure out what I was doing. In this section here, that spot right down at the bottom where it starts to line up with that light strip that we put in in the last episode, this is where I realized that the transition to that existing strip that we put in in the last episode is actually lining up very well. And I hadn't really given a lot of thought as, as to how I would make that happen up to this point. It just sort of came together and I was looking at it and I thought, wow, that's, that's going to be one of the most effortless transitions that I've ever done because it just sort of came together on its own. And it's been like this. Um, pretty much throughout this particular part of the build is just things coming together uh, for no good reason <laughs> whatsoever. I can't take credit for it. It just happened. But you can see it's it's not a particularly um, complicated design. It's got some curves and it's got some angles and it's got some things coming together. Uh, it takes a little bit of familiarity with the block shapes and specifically what we're working with in order to... Um, come to some of these shapes and some of these profiles and the way that they fit together but it's not like um, some of the designs that we've done in the past where it's all the curves and the angles all coming together um, in ways that we kind of have to make up as we go along in this case I've got an idea based on sort of the interpretation 
of the shape of the nacelles, it, that's sort of guiding a lot of what I'm trying to accomplish here. And in that sense, um, we've got that little bit of an edge. We don't have to think as hard to figure out what we want to do because ultimately we're pushing it in a certain direction and that direction has been defined by somebody else. So we've got that going for us. And just, just like that, it's basically, uh, we're just putting in the last couple blocks to finish that transition off. And now we're on to the other side. And this is, like I say, I completely forgot exactly what it was that I had to do in order to make this work. So there's a certain amount of time going back and forth and looking at things and double checking in the hopes that I'll, I'll get it right the first time and not have to spend a lot of time redoing something that I've already completed on the other side because that gets um, a little bit embarrassing. <laughs> Just trying to show you guys, hey guys, look what I did. It was horrible. Every part of it was awful and it's entirely my fault. Like I said at the beginning, now that we've got this forward section well underway, uh, it's taking shape in a way that I'm happy with. I still have to put in the Passard collectors in the front of these things. So this flat section on the underside that I'm putting in now, uh, it's not even going to be staying for very long. They we're going to be punching holes in it to put the Passard collectors, and that's okay. I don't mind that at all. Um, sometimes it's good to have everything as a unified structure when you put it together and cut holes in it later as you need to just to help things sort of flow when the holes are cut and everything is supposed to look good. The alternative, of course, would be to build it with the holes already in it. And that can sometimes be a little bit tricky in the sense that um, you've never had the whole thing line up. You, you may have thought that it lined up, um, but it never did. And then you look at it and it's just very awkward because it was a shape that you tried to incorporate amongst other shapes and it just didn't work maybe the way that a person expected it might. So having it all one structure now and realistically speaking, the blocks that we're going to be removing are some of the easiest ones that we placed. They're like the 45 degree slopes in the middle that extend almost the, you know, it's basically the middle section, the middle third of this part of the structure from the top all the way to the bottom. Very, very easy to place. It didn't take us long at all. And by the time we get everything else done, the structure closed in, start punching holes, it'll still be a convincing shape that we can look at and say that was basically intentional. And um, the, so was punching the holes in it after we were done because we kind of had to. One of the things that occurred to me is that I might be able to, um, in the place of the Passard, Passard collectors, uh, put the, some of the reverse thrusters that seemed like it might be a viable option depending on how everything goes together. I may also just put all of the reverse thrusters somewhere else entirely. <laughs> it's, there's going to be so many thrusters on this ship. It, it's going to need uh, a lot of thrusters if we want it to move at all, much less um, at any kind of speed that you would be happy with. This thing isn't going to be about um, getting places quickly, turning on a dime, doing any of that kind of stuff. It's going to be, yeah, you can move it. Um, you can line it up in a particular direction and you can move in that direction, but it's not going to be fast. Uh, it's not going to be maneuverable. If a person is in an environment where you can use a ship of this size in PvP, you're going to be relying on turret placements more than the ship's maneuverability to survive. I, I don't expect this to be... Um, an especially survivable ship in PvP just because it's so large. And realistically, if you spread out your turrets so that you have defensive coverage in most of the areas of the ship, they're going to be so spread out, it's going to be very, very easy to pick them off and then just attack the areas that are no longer defended by turrets because the ship isn't going to be fast enough to do anything about it. So that's something that... Um, I will never have to deal with, but people who want to kind of just have some fun uh, spawn this in on a server and have their friends go at it, uh, it, it wouldn't be a particularly challenging fight, I don't think. But it could be a lot of fun uh, just for the sake of, you know, tearing huge holes in a ship like this. I think it could be kind of interesting wreckage to leave lying around in a scenario somewhere. I actually thought about that, about the, the viability of this ship in some sort of scenario where you send people out 
um, to gather components to repair the ship because it can't move or turn very fast and just end the scenario before it actually finishes. That would make a lot of sense. So I changed the lighting to white, decided to have a look at it. I'm pretty happy with the way that turned out. Uh, there's still room for some tweaks, but we'll worry about that later. And then I decided to do a little bit of texturing and paint, just another experiment with the color. So in the next episode, more about the nacelles. Uh, we're going to carry on with the build. If you want to be notified about that in future episodes, the easiest way to do that is to subscribe to my channel or follow me on social media. Links for social media are always in the information section below the video. Feel free to leave your comments and feedback. Thanks for watching, guys, and take care.